estrada do mundo? Que estrada do mundo? We swapped a resource just to base one, and in 1996 we flew her back, and it's been flying ever since. Okay, we'll go inside, we'll have a look at it. It's the only one in the world that's still flying. And the only reason it hadn't gone to be mortared down for scrap metal it was full of bird crap. And that saved it because the smelters wouldn't take it because they fixed the aluminium. Really? So that saves it from snorting and... Uh, Yeah, this here was a US military transport plane when we found it. Qantas didn't have this particular aircraft. We've done, or we're still doing it up actually as a Qantas plane. You can see mm. we're putting the bulkheads back in here now. The seats are out of one of Qantas's early jets, so they're, the bird crap kind of ruined all the seats that we're yeah, in. Yeah. And, uh, The right 3350 engines, by the way, they use 9 litres of oil every hour, 440 litres of fuel every hour. <laughs> so if we go to somewhere and we uh, get the fuel tanker to come and fill the fuel tanks up, we carry our own oil around to fill the oil tanks up. <laughs> get out of there. Isn't it? Yeah, we've got three types of navigation. We've got the celestial navigation, that's the sextant here. Goes up through this hole here and then you take sightings from the stars. We've got the beacon and radar, but now we've got a satellite navigation unit, the same as everywhere else. Yeah. So. We've been a lot of things, but uh, it's all sold overseas and then you, you don't hear much about it until somebody else says it's theirs. <laughs> By the way, with an airliner, those toilets would have been kind of up here towards the middle. Uh, okay. First class on these, by the way, was down the back here. The second class up the front, opposite to what it is these days. Okay, yeah. But when you're up the front and you look out, exhaust pipes and engines, that's the noisy end of the plane. Oh, okay, so, okay. Yeah. That's the plane as we found it over in the deserts. This, this plane? This one here, this, that's this plane, yes. Yeah. Oh. How did it end up in the desert? Because it was no longer used and it was scrapped over there. Oh. the bird poo that was in it and that saved it. Oh, because of the bird poo they yeah. can't scrap it? The, the, they, they can't melt it down because their bird poo affects the aluminium. Ah, okay. When you open a beer can, you'd have holes in the beer can because of the, uh, of the bird poo in the aluminium. Mm. So that that's saved how it. strong is the yeah, bird saved, poo. Yeah, it saved it. Okay, any questions about it?
We had 116 of those in Australia. The first two were built over in France, the third one assembled here, the rest of them were made in Australia under licence. Same equipment as the Neptune that you'll see up in the other hangar. Mm -hmm. But these were used on aircraft carriers. And they, their main role was to protect the fleet at sea. You can just see the little bulge underneath the middle there painted black on this end. Mm -hmm. That's the surface radar. That drops down and retracts back up. The piece sticking out, you can just see it from here. You see there's like a balloon sticking out behind the tail? Oh, yeah. That's yep. a magnetic anomaly detector. That comes out about two metres and retracts back in. That searches for uh, metal in the water. Submarine's a big hunk of metal, so uh, we'll find a yeah. uh, submarine in the water. The wing up the top there with the perspex on the end, there's a 70 million candle power searchlight in there. Oh, okay. And then these drop sonar boys from behind the end. Uh, sonar boys like a floating microphone, send the signal back, and then they know where to drop the depth charge. This one will never fly again. We've got one up in the other hangar that's flying now. Okay. We've got a Bristol bow fighter over there that one day will we'll fly. You can see we've got a new part we've made here. Still a lot of work to be done there before that's anywhere near uh, looking good without saying ready to fly. Here we've got a wind drill made by the Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation down in Victoria. Train of with the RAAF. Hmm. Okay, the little yellow plane over the front there is a Tiger Moth. Another one of our airworthy planes. We'll just move a bit closer and have a look at the Mustang. Just mind that cord as we walk through here. That Tiger Moth's not an original Tiger Moth, it's made up of two different Tiger Moths. Oh, okay. The original thing about it though, the fuel tank's up in the middle of the top wing, it's still gravity fed from the fuel tank down to the engine. So if you turn that one upside down, you uh, run out of fuel. The oh, fuel really? doesn't flow uphill. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of Tiger Moths around the world today, you've got a fuel pump on and they do aerobatics. With ours we say straight and narrow. <laughs> oh, okay. And this is our Mustang, and this is actually the Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation Mustang built down in Victoria. It's got the Packard Maryland engine in it, and uh, the assembly line in Bankstown back in 1950. Okay. Got three gypsy major engines and that's the same engine that's in the little Tiger Moth over there. These were used by the TAA and ANA back in their days as a light commuter aircraft 
But through the 50s, the main user was the flying dock. Okay. Very robust little plane. You can land them on a gravel road or a smooth pad. We've got six seats in that just to take members and sponsors for flights, but the flying doctor would add a stretcher, seat for a doctor or a nurse, and just the one pilot. Okay. Okay. We've got two vampires. That one there only ever taxis around the history. Okay. That one there, we have to have flying this year sometime. And that one will never fly again because they've got a timber fuselage and uh, the timber in that one, we don't know what it's like. But mm. be, this one's all being checked out, so this is the one that we'll have flying. I'll just knock on them and show you where the timber is. Did they normally have the fluo orange on them? Was there a reason? Uh, you'll notice on the front it's got tall stars. Yeah. And that was a aerobatic cartoon. Oh, okay. Uh, when these were flying, each, team, each squadron used to have their own aerobatic team and these were with the Telstars, so that's probably why they got the orange. Also, a lot of the trainers had the orange or yellow. Oh, OK. And these were both two-seat trainers, so that's probably another reason they got the orange on them. Hmm. But as you can see, that bit there is metal, but this here was all timber. Of course, yeah. all behind the engine would uh, be uh, metal because yeah. of the, you don't want to set fire to all the jet exhaust. <laughs> bit inconvenient. Yeah. Uh. Okay, yeah. 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 By the way, this is a Convair 440. It was donated to us by Rovers, the tour group over in South Africa. It's a rich man's toy. That one's got leather seating inside. Oh, really? <laughs> See? This is our F-111. Still belongs to the Air Force. You can go up and you can sit inside the cockpit on this one. But 50,000 feet up, 2,500 kilometres an hour. Sea level, 1,500. It's called a paved tack. And with that, and his controls up in the cockpit, he can aim his weapons in at the target. Mm. Miles and miles before he's anywhere near the target. Fire the laser, then fire the weapons, and they'll follow that laser into the target, even though the plane's heading back in the other direction. You didn't have to fly over the target to hit the target. These came in so fast and so low, they came in under the radar. The weapons, were the bombs and that were exploding uh, and they never even saw or heard these things because they'd been and gone before they started exploding. This one was the last one in the world to shut its engines down. That was on the 3rd of December 2010. Mm -hmm. We kept ours flying 12 years longer than the Americans kept theirs flying. Hmm. The Avon Sabre. When we got the Sabre, our Air Force wanted the American F-86 Sabre. Okay. Our government at the time, Mr. Menzies, the Royal Royals, we had to buy British. And they were having teething problems with the Hawker Hunter at the time, which is the plane we would have had. But we came to a compromise. We bought the American F-86 airframe and the Rolls-Royce Avon engine to put in there. But to fit that engine in, we had to change the fuselage 60% and it made it a different plane altogether. It was faster, climbed quicker and maneuvered yeah. better. The Panther on the side is not for the Penrith football team. <laughs> That's these... good, I'm a rabbit that supporter. <laughs> yeah. when, the, when these were flying, each squadron used to have their own aerobatic team, the same as the Telstars mm. here and the Black Panthers were the 76 squadron. That one we will have flying again, but it's a long-term project. If you take that cowling off the front now, you'll find the cylinders got, or the engine's got no cylinders on it. It's just a, a round thing. We're now looking at the, um, oh, what would you call it? The feasibility of getting that to fly again. But, we will have it flying again. It came up from the Nara Naval Historic Flight. 
And we do hope they have a You're probably wondering why we're spending so much time and money on the outside when it's not ready to fly yet. But this year is Qantas's 100th birthday. Yeah. So we'll be outside doing some promotions for that. That's why it's done up to Qantas and everything. Yeah. Okay, now here we've got a sea bin. This one will never fly, but it's one of the ones that's come up from now. And uh, we've put that together. Dave's spent a lot of time putting this together too, by the way. Uh, it came up in containers. We've just put it together. And uh, as I say, we'll never fly, but we're going to paint it up nice. And that will just be a static model. Okay. Hmm. Now here we've got two Neptunes. That's the one we've got flying at present and this one's ready to fly again and the one at the front will never fly again. This one we saved from Tahiti back in 1989 so we're going to use that as a fire drill. Mm. They were towing it from where it was parked to where they were going to set it on fire and they got a bolt. We had a crew over that way a few months later and said, what's happening with that Neptune there? They said, if you want it, you can have it. So we purchased it and flew it back, or worked on it and flew it back. But the, with the Neptune, they were an anti-submarine warfare plane, so used for SARS, so searching for submarines. The big bulge underneath the belly there, you've got your surface radar, that will find ships on the surface. This piece sticking out here behind the tail, has got a magnetic anonymy detector in there, that will pick up metal in the water. Uh, inside you've got sonar, uh, sonar boys and they drop them down chutes. Then they send signals back and then they know where to drop their depth charges or torpedoes. you got the right 3350 engines on this, and that's the same engine that's in the conning. But in these little pods outside, you've got a little Westinghouse jet assist to take off in you. I only use that a bit extra thrust on a shorter runway. Mm -hmm. um, there was one of these back in 1946, flew from Perth in Western Australia to Ohio, Ohio in America. And that was uh, during the Cold War. And it was to prove to the Russians that wherever they had a submarine in the world, they could find them. Yeah. What they didn't tell the Russians was if they found them, they couldn't have done a thing about it because every little bit of room on that plane was taken up with fuel to do that <laughs> one flight. <laughs> crew of eight on these, you had an observer in the nose and you had your pilot and your co-pilot. Behind him facing the wall you had a flight engineer and there's two systems men. And they're looking after the results from the sonar boys or different results that are sent back to the plane. And then up over the wing and down the other side, because that wing goes right through the plane, you come down, there's a radio operator seat, and these two windows here right at the back are two more observers. Okay. Over here we have got our Canberra Bomber, named Canberra Bombers because Australia was the first country to order them from England. They were designed and built in England and Australia being the first country, in honour of that they named them the Canberra Bomber. Okay. This one was a two-seat trainer built over in England, it will never fly again, the airframe's past flying. But uh, yeah, it's got the Rolls-Royce Avon engines in here, that's the same engine that was in the Sabre jet down in the other hangar. Okay. Yeah. We've got a Wessex helicopter here. Now Australia had 24 Wessexes. The first batch they got in 1963, the last batch in 1965, and they were all phased out by 1989. They were used for submarine hunters. The, the, when we first got them, they were based on aircraft carriers. When the aircraft carriers went out of the air, were decommissioned, these then became transport and rescue helicopters. What we're doing with this one, we'll never fly again, but we're going to put all these sub-hunting gear back in here to make it as they were originally. Where those steps are on the side, when it goes to its final resting place in our museum, wherever that is, we're going to put a special set of steps up there so people can get into the cockpit. Mm -hmm. If we let people climb up there now, we'd have more falling on the floor than we would in the... <laughs>
Mm. Yes. See the mm. hubcap on there? Mm. Where that navy sign is. Inside there, there's a bladder that's got one psi of air in it at all times. These bladders, if you happen to come down in the water, those hubcaps fly off and big balloons come out there. And that keeps it afloat mm. long enough for everybody to get out of it before it just starts sinking. And that's all right. The last Friday I had a chap here that used to uh, fly these. He said, everything's all right as long as everything works. He said, but we came down in the water once, we deployed them, and one of them didn't work, and the one that didn't work was the one near the door, and they were coming out under the water. <laughs> and when you come out of a helicopter underwater, you're very destabilised. So, <laughs> as I say, everything works well as if it works. works well. Yeah, but that's how we're saying. As I never fly again. DC-3. And when TIA started up, the government gave that to TIA because TIA was a government operated airline. And his first flight for TIA was from uh, Melbourne to Australia, back, oh, sorry, Melbourne to Sydney back in uh, 1946. 20 years ago, this was hanging from an arch as you went into the car park at Tullamarine Airport. Really? Yeah. They were going to, or they were re redeveloping that car park, they were going to scrap that. Qantas crew got together and said you can't scrap that and they took it down and rebuilt it. So you've been flying now for at least 12 years so it's a uh, plane which is probably ridiculous but as they keep saying if you don't yeah. grab them while they're there they don't last long. Exactly. Yeah. This, is another, this is our Grumman tracker the same as the one down in the other hangar but this is the one we've got flying. The one thing I didn't show you on the one down there was their rest of it. And that's the rest of the there. Catch the oh, cable yeah. on the deck when you're landing on an aircraft. And from where we were standing, you couldn't see where the sonar was, but that's where they are here behind the engine. They just drop them in out in the pattern. And, uh, yeah. Hmm. Good for that. Now, here we've got one of our caribou. Of the original caribous in the world today, there's only three left flying. Hmm. We're lucky enough to have two of them. Is the other up? one's over in America. Okay, that's <laughs> the next question. They're built by de Havilland over in Canada. Uh, both houses are Vietnam veterans, by the way. Well, he served in Vietnam. This particular one here, the chapter went with this one from Richmond to Vietnam back in. Still a member here today, but he's as wide as he is tall now. Old age is tall. Yeah, yeah. But he had a lot to do with us getting these from the Air Force. Very good plane for flood relief and drought relief because they fly so low and so slow. You can drop a bale of hay on the ground within a couple of feet of where you are. You can see underneath how you can change the wing, wing shape so much to uh, allow the low speed. Yeah. Impressive things. This is a MiG-21. We haven't learned much about it yet, but this one came from the Polish Air Force, even though it's got Indian Air Force markings on it. But uh, this has been coming down for months. The, uh, the wings and that just arrived here on Friday. So as I say, we'll learn about it as we get it ready to go. We'll never fly. What they're hoping to do is ta taxi it around. Okay. Mm. And of all the planes you've seen so far in the museum, this is the only one that's had nothing to do with Australian aviation. And that's why I don't know why we've even got it here. <laughs> <laughs> here we've got our Catalina. This was a oh. water bomber over in Portugal when, Portugal when we got it. It was red and white. It had a turtle nose and it didn't have blisters. And by blisters I mean those bubbles along the side near the back. But when we got it back here, the first thing was a coat of black paint. Because at that time we had a chap here. Used to fly black cats, 
during the Second World War. Houston's passed away, but his cat saw fires today. He lived long enough to see it. They fire a full black cat, which was a bonus. Oh, really? Yeah. So we'll go around this one. I'll just show you a bit of it. When I say it had a purple nose, it was kind of just around that section of nose here. I'll show you a photo of it. That's the plane that's we got it from Portugal. Okay, the first thing we no, no, noticed, no blisters. First thing was the coat of black paint. Then down at Lake Boga, down on the Murray River, there's a static one of these. We borrowed the blisters off that to get the pattern. We fabricated the blisters up, mm. cut the original holes back out, and then put the blisters back on. Then we went over the bone yards over in America. There was that wreck over there. We cut that section off the nose. Brought that back and we put that on them and put the turret onto the front of it, made into a full black cat. Catalinas were obsolete by the way when the Second World War started because the first Catalinas flew back in 1934. Mm. The first Catalinas were a pure flying boat, no wheels on them. Then the later models were the amphibians and uh, as you can see Reese's uh, flame was a pure flying boat but that was the nearest thing we could get to it. So. We don't land it in water anymore. It's a lot safer landing on land. Mm -hmm. You had a machine going in each of these blisters too, by the way, and the one in the nose. Engineer on these, by the way, sits up there in there without the window. <laughs> so he's got a noisy job, a big engine on each side of him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now over the back here is our uh, Southern Cross. Hmm. And this is a replica of the Southern Cross. You know the Southern Cross story, do you? The first plane to fly from America to Australia in 1928. That's right, yeah. King Smith, yeah. This is a replica, though. It was built as a flying monument to Sir Charles King for Smith. Then during our bicentennial year, this went around the country to different air shows. And they were raising money for the flying doctor. Its last flight, though, was down at Parafels in South Australia in 2002. And on that flight, they lost a circle of the landing gear over here, I'll show you. One of those. Okay. Out of that groove there. And this is what happened. We've had this up here for 12 years now. It's ready to fly again as soon as we get the other two engines back. Now with parachutes jumping out, see that section of the door where the yellow is? Mm. That section lifts off inside the plane. Because you can't open that big door like that when well, you're it's flying. Fine, I suppose. We'll yeah. go inside on that one. Mm. It's also an emergency exit of course, but uh, the main main reason is for, for troops to jump out. Very comfortable seats for five minutes. Then you wish you had a cushion with you. <laughs> Still rather be sitting on yeah. one of them than jumping out. Oh of yeah, one. <laughs> twenty-eight fully armed troops you'll carry, where the caribous will carry thirty-two fully armed troops. <laughs> yeah. Just be careful here, because the steps are a bit off centre here. So yeah. Mm.
Sports Semi-Retired Fan Line on YouTube can be cool.